Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Alathrex, and of course, welcome to Here Be Dragons. In today's video, we're going to be testing out the brand new Origin, which has been added in the Aquatics Portrait DLC, and we're going to be seeing just how good it is. I will be playing this completely blind. I am recording this very soon after the release of the game, straight after recording the other Origin, the Ocean Paradise. So with Here Be Dragons, since time immemorial, this civilization has shared its solar system with a formidable dragon. The mysterious creature's behaviour sways between distant benevolence and haughty indifference. How this relationship will evolve as the planet dwellers take to the stars remains to be seen. Start with a space dragon roaming your home system. The dragon may protect you from harm, but beware its wrath should you displease it. Which shouldn't be a problem for us, we truly believe the dragon was here as a sign of destiny. We are fanatic spiritualists and we believe that we alone have been chosen to be the dragon's people. And as such, I have chosen only the most beautiful of portraits. <laughs> Sorry, I absolutely love this portrait because it looks horrific. It looks like the result of some kind of horrible experiment on some species you really don't like, and I mean that in a good way. I love this species, even if when they open their mouths occasionally, it looks like they are begging for the end to finally offer them some release. Absolutely adore them. So they're the chosen people, the ultimate species, of course. Maybe... They are baby dragons. This is what baby dragons look like. I'm sorry, but this is peak dragon performance. So to go along with this perfect form, we are of course pompous purists. A society so utterly convinced of their own superiority that any attempt at diplomacy not initiated by themselves would be utterly ignored. Can only engage in diplomacy with other empires if they are the proposer, trust growth plus 30%, and available envoys plus 2. You need to be a xenophobe for this. It just gives you the option to be diplomatic while also being xenophobic. It's really cool in my opinion. It's one of those civics. I first saw it and I didn't really think much of it, but then I thought more about it and actually I like having a bit of an evil run sometimes. I know, surprise, I am normally the good guys, of course, but this really makes that more possible in different playstyles. And then we are the Exalted Priesthood because, well, it's all about worshipping the dragon in the sky, so I think that only makes sense. We are going to be a, a unity rushing build, I think, with this setup, just because that's kind of how it happened. I haven't really rushed units in ages, so that's what we're going with. We are, of course, using the aquatic ship appearance, and that's pretty much it. Although I'm not using the aquatic um, buildings because I don't like them very much. It's one of the only things I'm not a big fan of with the DLC. I prefer, like, the reptilian ones, honestly, or the molluscoid over the aquatic for the water-born ones. So, yeah, we're going with that. And with that, let's get going. Oh, yeah, we are, we are of course, aquatic, rapid readers, and traditional. Let's begin with our creepy, creepy little things. Hey everyone, a future Lathrix here. Now normally I wouldn't be here to shill for the channel unless it was a full playthrough, but this video did take about as much time to record because it is very heavily edited down, and it turns out the origin just has a lot to cover, so I focused almost completely on the origin itself and cut away at most of the day-to-day -day stuff within the normal run. So I hope you enjoy. This origin is definitely one of the ones which I honestly have absolutely fallen in love with, so I will be doing a full playthrough of it soon, and a like and a comment really do help out the channel and make sure videos like this do well, because they can be a bit weird. Even though this is a bit shorter, well, a fair bit shorter than a full playthrough, it does help a lot. So with that, back to past Lathrix. I'm really bad at shilling. We have always known the dragon. It has graced the skies above perfect place since time immemorial. I can't believe Lathrix named the world that. I completely forgot about that. Our early interactions with it scattered throughout Squiggles folklore. <laughs> I also forgot I called you guys Squiggles. Yep, I have a good memory. For a long time, it was the story of conflict, as our early weaponry proved no match for the mighty beast. But then the stories tell of a visionary who, against all odds, managed to broker peace between Squiggles and Dragon. In subsequent encounters, the Dragon has proved a distant, enigmatic figure whose example has ever spurred our efforts to reach the stars. However, the invention of rapid propulsion systems and the discovery of the Hyperline network have brought about a new uneasy period of relations with the dragon, as we increasingly intrude upon areas it has roamed in solitude for eons. 
It is for us to decide what our future holds. Will we study the dragon and perhaps eventually learn to communicate with it, or will we be driven to conflict, the confines of a single solar system simply too small to share with such a formidable creature? So, uh, future Lathrix may have mentioned this already, depending if I've edited that in, but I am going to be editing this playthrough very heavily compared to usual, since it's mostly about the actual origin itself. Any major events I will of course cover, but day-to-day -day stuff will be a bit less than usual. So this is the lovely dragon simply going around our system. Love the model. I want to boop it on the snoot. Now, uh, that aside, let's find our first world. Whoa. Well, that was easy. Lathrix built temple because temple is good. Attempt 7 at reading this, my dyslexia really hates me today. Our researchers observing the Sky Dragon have reported loud creaking noises seemingly coming from its internal organs. It has also been circling around the perfect place unusually often over the last few months, sometimes swooping right past that the upper reaches of the atmosphere before pulling away again. Our working hypothesis is that the creature is hungry and wishes to land to feed, as it has periodically done in the past. It is not clear why it hesitates. Perhaps it wishes to see how we react now that we have joined it amongst the stars. Fire a warning shot. Set aside some space. Oh, that's a lot of influence. Thankfully, we have loads, because I've been going with all the influence um, choices at the moment, and I've even gone with Interstellar Dominion, because we're kind of protected here by this fallen empire. So we need to expand rapidly, though, because we could easily get choked out, because, well, we're kind of stuck. So, yeah, I went with that, and apparently that paid off. So, here's some space. The dragon is likely to, to consume a lot of food once it lands on the planet. I would imagine it's a very big dragon. It's bigger than the planet. It's doing a dance. <laughs> the dragon's landed. Has it? <laughs> the dragon appeared to realise our intention and our intentions and gracefully swooped down to rest in the area we had vacated. The large supply of food we left behind probably helped, it must be said. The dragon has laid into it with outstanding ferocity. Our researchers are observing it from a distance. Feeding dragon added to, to perfect place with the following result, plus 10 stability, plus 7 unity, minus 15 food. Taking flight will happen in 15 to 16 years. Okay. Well, that's lovely, giving us extra um, stability and extra unity. That's great, considering we are a unity-based civilization. So, lovely. Also, I found some primitives who like arid worlds. Perfect! They can stay nice and far away from us while still serving us for the greater good of the dragon. Our scientists have discovered something rather monstrous. The mountain range it scanned earlier was in actuality the outer membrane of a gigantic egg. It's uncertain what behemoth could lay such an egg, and what horror would hatch from it. Situation log updated. Well, we're xenophobes. We break it open. The insides of the planet were not what we expected. Instead of some infant titanic life form, we've simply uncovered genetic slop. The entire planet is filled with genetic material and resources. What all this material would have become is unclear, but our galaxy is probably safe for not knowing. We just killed the giant baby. Taking flight. After several years of gorging itself on the bountiful harvests of Perfect Place, the now considerably girthier Sky Dragon has once again taken flight. With a final roar in salute, it lifted off, leaving behind a large collection of scale, shed skin, and other byproducts in its presence. Of its presence, rather. We shall study the remains, we shall burn them. Once again, we basically worship this thing as a deity. We, are, we will study the remains. Not half our tech for a while as well. We're not doing particularly well with tech, but we are expanding rapidly, and we are blocked by another fallen empire. What is this starting location? I like the part where every event seems to want to give me influence. Another new event, one of our science ships got stuck on this world, we had to save it, and it's given us, by the looks of things, a permanent plus 15% research to field manipulation. Oh, wait, no, no, it's only gave that to the scientist. Never mind, I thought we was going to get a really, really good leader, but this one only has propulsion as its other one, so... Eh, it wasn't particularly great. But, yep, brand new event, so that was neat. I had to have three science vessels there to save them. Also, yeah, aquatic um, science vessels, definitely my favourite now. Well, that's annoying. So, I really wanted a federation, so I thought... 
what's better than just making a new form of ourselves? So I made this little vassal and was thinking to myself, okay, I'll make a federation with myself as I make the vassal. But I can't do it. And um, they are reluctant to discuss this proposal because, of course, they're pompous purists. Because they're like us. So we can't discuss that. I can't make them into a Federation member unless they ask me. So I'm hoping that they have the same traditions as me, because then maybe they will ask us. I didn't even consider that. That is honestly pretty funny. Draconic scale investigation. But first, I finally have the ability to do one of our ascensions, so we're going with Engineered Evolution. I was hoping to go with the Psychic one, but we simply didn't get the tech. But in, in a way, this is better, because we can build on the perfection. <laughs> that is these fellas. Yep, we're just going to make them perfect. And these can become the ultimate servants, I suppose, as well, since eventually we are going to turn all worlds into ocean worlds, so the squiggles will rule these worlds, and we are xenophobic. So, yeah. Ultimate Servants. Anyway, let's get back down to the whole dragon thing, shall we? Now that we have made some progress understanding xenobiology and exotic materials, our researchers have proposed that we send a science ship to take a closer look at the dragon. They are particularly interested in its scales, which are remarkably durable, even impenetrable. While we have acquired numerous naturally shed samples, our scientists remain baffled on how the scales form. Using what they describe as a mildly intrusive probe, they believe they can get under the dragon's protective layer and directly study its natural processes. Surely the dragon will not mind. Surely. Um, no, we're gonna go with something less intrusive, so... Remote dragon scanning. Remember, we are meant to be the dragon's bestest friend. I'm not gonna send a probe to annoy it. Situation log updated. Also, fanatic purifiers over here. Thankfully, at war with this federation, we're in a weird position at the moment. Thankfully, we've just got cruiser tech, and we're doing okay for tech. So I'm just gonna try and defend the borders at the moment. We are still expanding rapidly over here. So weird border gore because of this xenophobic um, fallen empire, which is really annoying. Okay, so I guess I need a science vessel. Here, let's scan the dragon. Though the dragon watched our science vessel attentively, it did not react as we subjected it to several deep scans, the most thorough we were capable of with our current level of technology. They provided us with fresh insights into its biological processes, though the secret behind its scaly hide remains as elusive as ever. Although our researchers are forced to admit defeat on that matter, they assure us that they will nonetheless be able to put the knowledge they have acquired to good use. Oh. Maybe the probe would have gave us, like, the dragon scales or something, you know, the actual armour for the ships. But still, you know, we are the bestest friends with the dragon, so that's all well and good, I suppose. Okay, so basically straight after we now have communications. Following our successes in establishing communications with a number of alien species, one of our leading linguists has brought forth a radical proposal. Though past efforts to communicate with the Sky Dragon have failed miserably, they argue that now is the time to make another attempt. According to our earliest histories, there was a fabled accord between Squiggles and Dragon, after which direct conflict ceased. Citing this as proof that understanding on some level is possible, they note that our recent experiences with utterly alien life forms make us better equipped than ever before to understand the Drake. Our envoys will attempt to communicate with the Dragon. Uh, which one do I want to send over? Probably just you, because these guys hate us anyway, so I give up trying to be friends with them. Send in the squeeze. As our researchers and linguists trawl through the records of known interactions with the dragon, they have prepared a few experiments to test its responses. They assure us that every move is planned and that they will cease their activities at the slightest sign of displeasure from the dragon. Okay, then keep at it. The mass extinction event's done, and we're about to get our relic world from our precursor. Lovely. If we weren't surrounded by everyone who hates us, I'd say this is a really fantastic start, but I'm kind of just stuck at the moment. I'm not really strong enough to break out, and no one wants to form a federation with me. Maybe you, though. But, oh no, you're no longer at war. Fantastic. Um, ooh, we are really close to forming a federation with you. What I need, those favours. 
and a little bit more friendship from that. And can I form a federation now? Thank you. Sadly, only a galactic union, but that is fine. An irritated dragon. We are not quite sure what went wrong, but our researchers seem to have displeased the dragon. With a mighty roar, the creature unleashed its deadly breath upon the vessel, killing the envoy. Ooh. Thankfully, envoys are very easy to replace in comparison to the leaders, so... Not really a big deal, but, uh, whoops a daisy <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Dragon. The Truth of Roars. Our linguists report an outstanding breakthrough. Despairing at ever being able to understand the dragon, they transpose the spectral map of its fluctuating corporal energy emissions to acoustic waveforms. I know what I just said. As they listened to the results, they could not believe their ears. It was undeniable. The dragon was speaking our language, but in a different medium. Its roars were in fact only meant to draw our attention, rather than an attempt at communication. Our linguists replayed old recordings with this knowledge in mind. According to them, the dragon's past utterances have been di <laughs> disappointingly puerile. It's been mocking us, in rude ways I assume, uh, grumbling about food and the slow progress of the planet crawlers. Nevertheless, the creature now expresses surprise and pleasure that we were able to understand it. Indeed, it displays an... I swear some days my dyslexia is on a whole nother level. I just looked at that for a good five minutes and I was just like, no, that's a blur. That's a blur of letters. Alacrity, not seen for many years. Apparently it has a matter of great importance that it wishes to speak with us about. But only when we are ready. But we are ready. Ooh, that's a lot of influence. The Xeno Empire has somehow Ooh. deciphered our language. The dragon launches into a lengthy, di <laughs> lengthy diatribe about the wisdom it has accumulated over the eons, and its observations regarding our attitude towards time and commitments, not to mention our still pitiful knowledge of the fundamentals of the universe. Apparently it considers us young and reckless and unworthy of this quest. Well, thank you for the huge boost of unity, that's lovely. Okay, fine, I'll finally go into Discovery. Probably should have got that a lot earlier, but I like the other things more for, for fun. Under attack. Good to know that the AI is as derpy as ever. The fanatical purifiers attacked us, but they've just been kind of throwing themselves at our two star bases. In fact, I could probably push back now. Eh, might as well grab some of the lesser stuff. I'm not too sure about going after their proper worlds, but just grab all that. Colonization efforts begin. Yep, goodbye. And finally we tap back. We have mastered a new We're also at war over here, I'm not really helping out, just our Federation member wanted to go to war, so we are. The time has come! That was weird. Um Yeah, so we've got uh, evolutionary mastery now. Uh but the time has come! A time passes, and with it my Oh, it's the dragon! Okay. Did that just happen because I got my ascension stuff? Because if not, that was weirdly timed. Tempted to look it up, maybe I'll look it up after the video. Future Lathrix here, so yep, turns out if you get the full ascension, that is the biological, the synthetic or the psychic ascension completely done, then the dragon instantly deems you worthy, otherwise it's a set amount of ascension perks, um, I think just either unlocked or chosen. So it is all to do with your ascension path. So yay for rushing unity in this run. Time passes and with it my doubts. From small beginnings have I watched you, often despairing at your frequent... <laughs> impunity, and yet always roaring in delight at your successes. Now I find that you have grown, that your civilization has matured and is ready to be entrusted with the ultimate responsibility. Parenthood! It is time for you to rededicate yourselves to, to rearing my children. Okay. Gonna have little baby dragons, apparently. Wait, what? To be perfectly candid, I have long awaited this day, longer than you can possibly imagine. When I set out from home, I was little more than a whelp. I journeyed far and wide before I came across a planet with the potential to produce a foster civilization that would one day be ready to raise my children. And so, I waited. Yes, it is our way. In our home galaxy, 
different galaxy. There are many of my kind, each seeking out a nascent civilization to raise their young. But I am the first, to my knowledge, to have come so far. Well, for one thing, a fully grown guardian dragon is a formidable foe. If you agree, I will pledge myself and my offspring to your cause, and we will aid you in battle. If we refuse, then you will have made your choice, and I will leave. I have waited a long time, I can wait longer. But obviously we're gonna- well, 500 influence, but obviously we're gonna accept. Excellent, I knew you'd say yes. You will not regret this. So I think it just said we can build a hatchery or something. Is it just in a station? Yeah, there we are, Dark Hatchery. Needs the Citadel, though. And we can make up to ten of the dragons. Okie dokes, well. That's good, because we're currently at war with two enemies now. Of course, a jump, which is pretty cool. You know what? Uh, yeah, go over there. And we will try and... S well, well, we'll just find out how, how powerful you actually are. One of our spaceports has been lost. Against the purifier as we move. Construction complete. Okay, the dragon hatchery is online, so... There we are, the fledgling dragons, it requires living metal? Okay, uh, 100 living... no, 90 living metal, base 100, okay, so I've got some discounts. 500 crystals, 500 gas, course reduced to 450 of both. That's really expensive. Now, thankfully, I do have living metal. We have one close to our base, which I'm not collecting. Why am I not collecting that? Why do I never have minerals when I want minerals? I know I should just do a repeatable. We are actually collecting living metal from elsewhere, but I didn't get the one next to the base. Sure. But I don't have enough crystals or anything, so... I could just buy them outright and start building our first dragon. Hatching our first dragon? Hatching our first dragon. Let's try and get all to- oh, they take a long time to build. Okay, I'm gonna spend all of my resources then trying to queue up all of these. We want them all building as soon as possible to join the parent. Future Lafrix here, just editing the video, and it turns out that Living Metal will always spawn within two jumps from your home system if you have the origin here be dragons. So you're always gonna have Living Metal to make the fledging dragons. I just thought I got incredibly lucky during this run. I like this dragon. We have mastered a new technology. We have our first fledgling dragon and oh it's tiny. Hello. Okay, so this one actually has a fleet power though, unlike the parents. I just realized you can actually put the parent into a fleet? Okay, I didn't expect that. So, Hrozgar of the Endless Flames can actually be part of a fleet, which means they can benefit from a leader. I thought they were just a unique entity, so I didn't even think about that. Oh, but that means we can have the baby dragons with the parent. Okay, yep, yeah, that's what we're doing. As soon as you have all the dragons born, then I'm going to go after the silencers, the, uh, the fanatic purifiers over here, and finish them off using only the dragons. We are making a lot of them. Though it is still incredibly expensive, I am trying to focus as much as possible just getting as many of the rare resources and everything, so we're getting there slowly. On the upside, the starbase is now fully building, so really we should make another uh, shipyard somewhere. So now I merged the dragon and unmerged him, I can actually see his stat line. Well, I can see his uh, fleet power anyway, we still can't actually tell what the dragon stats are, but... 44.4k fleet power. Well, I guess we can see the hull points in the armor, we're just gonna see the weapons. So it has 150,000 hull and 104,000 armor, so yeah, pretty tanky indeed. I wonder what the younger dragon stats are then. 10,000 hull and 4,000. Oh, they are significantly squishier. Ah, oh, but we have so many of them already. Wonder what their firepower's like. We have mastered oh, that's a shame. I don't quite have enough. Um, yeah, I don't quite have enough fleet size to have all the dragons in System one fleet. Which is really sad. So we're gonna have two, which are just kind of on their own. 
a quick as well. So there's our lovely little fleet. So what I'm going to do is attack very soon and see just how powerful they are. I'll probably try and find the actual stats of the dragons and their weapons and everything um, after I'm done recording. So if I've done that, I'll pop it in the video here. So here are the stats of the main dragon, the Sky Dragon. So it has a jump drive with a really short charge time. It just has the normal combat computer, which is interesting, biopropulsion and biosensors. Then it has Dragon Breath, which has a really insane um, damage just gulf there. It can go between 5,000 and 12,000 damage, so that's kind of all over the place. It then has the wing skewers, which do less damage to shields, it's all energy based, and then the drake lightning, which is its point defense, once again energy. It has the large dragon scale armor for loads of extra hull points, and it does have regenerative hull tissue. The smaller dragons, interestingly, have almost the same damage. Yeah, so here's one of the small dragons. Yep, pretty much all the same stuff. I'm not quite sure why it does that. Oh, it's because it doesn't have the combat computer. That's why it's doing less damage. But yeah, far squishier, but a decent chunk of damage. Just so much vi uh, variation in the damage that the dragon's breath can do. Which is something I actually noticed earlier, but I thought I was just imagining it. Okay, that's it. So. Also, yeah, look at their names. The Gracious, the Just, the Guardian, the Bold, the Green, the Glorious. Alzino fleet engaged. The Dragon Horde versus the Dimensional Horror. Okay, our range is significantly less than the Horrors. I thought it'd be kind of equal. Oh, please don't lose one of these. Ah, no! This is a terrible idea! <laughs> I did not think this one through. There we go, look at all of that though at once. Yeah, those little ones are squishy. Come on. Oh, so many of them. Well, one of our spaceports is under attack. We were victorious, at least, in the end. Yeah, that's annoying. Sorry, dragons, but you're gonna have to go straight back to fighting to defend my territory. I'll work on getting some more dragons up and running. Now at the enemy's home system. Lovely. The actual damage output isn't bad at all, it's just how squishy the uh, the fledgling dragons are. I wonder if they'll ever... Ooh, nice. I wonder if they'll ever grow up, or if they're going to be permanently like that. I suppose since they are meant to be dragons which live an absurdly long time as well, they're probably not going to grow up in the span of a Stellaris game. What I'm doing right now, though, is focusing on repeatables, which I think will be buffing the dragons. That is energy weapon damage and armor. So, eventually, I want to go against the fallen empires with them. That's the very least I want to do before the end of this episode. Really want to see if the dragons can handle themselves against a more active foe. I feel like the fledgings will probably die pretty quickly, but I will also, also, of course, be sending in some battleships with them. So I think I can get them to really take part. There we go. All ten of the children and the parent. 171k fleet power. Yay for repeatables. So I had a bit of a crime problem on a lot of my worlds. I was fixing it on some of them, but with others I was just ignoring it. And it was because we had all these branch offices from the criminal syndicate, and look at how many I just closed. Yep. That's gonna help out a lot. We already have quite low stability on a lot of the worlds because, well, I'm being very nasty to species which aren't squiggles. So it's good to not have crime as well. Technology. Really? How many of you just wasted your main attack on that construction vessel? One of our spaceports is under attack. 
They seem really good against armor. So I lost two of the hatchlings then. I think, yeah, my opinion is still pretty much the same as earlier. Their damage seems good, and that's probably why they scale so well with the repeatables, because it seems like almost all their fleet power is in their damage, not so much their health and armor, except for, of course, the uh, parent there. So you're getting a lot of extra damage with that 5% um, attack speed, 5% extra damage. But they're just so frail. You can't have them on their own. I think they are just best with the other groups. I just wanted to test out quickly with us being much stronger than that station if I were to lose them. And of course I did. Although I did waste loads of shots on the construction vessel as I mentioned. It seems like that breath attack is the bulk of their damage. Okay, they're returning home. So we're going to go over here and defend the home system. And I'm about to lose my construction vessels. By that I meant to say landing forces. Wow, they've got everywhere. Well, this is only really to test out the dragons, but still. It would be nice if we dealt with these, so maybe I'll send the dragons to kill their fleets. That actually makes sense. They're very quick. And they probably won't take too much damage from just these fellas. Oh, you can run all you want, the dragons will eventually catch you. Most of their fleets over here have been taken care of and I was cleaning up all the groups over here. They've claimed lots of our worlds, but here's the thing, about an actual claim, it doesn't really matter, it's just disrupting my economy for a while. The dragon's doing the rest. And back over here, we have already taken one of the two core worlds, now just a boundary left. And once that's done, we have their main worlds, and they're the only worlds with the really high defense. All the other worlds are far easier, so no real problem there. Of course, the real key to any true diplomacy, as is the case in real life, is money. So I've just um, bought out the main opponent, uh, getting all 10 favors from them in exchange for some lovely energy credits and some rare resources, and now there's no chance they can win. I think I was going to win anyway, but I just wanted to see how well we could do that. Also, there's a rather cynical thing to say of me, but, you know, I'm in a cynical mood today. Okay, you're both too far ahead now, so I'm just going to jump, destroy, did that in the wrong order, I'll try that again, jump, destroy, destroy, you'll be weaker, but still probably strong enough to, to deal with those. You know those beware the dog signs? Beware the rampaging dragons. Get off my lawn. They have been judged, and found wanting. So now I have the two lovely worlds here. We have Core and Boundary, which of course have all of the super-powered buildings on. Lovely. And in a second, now I've got my gateway back, everything should go back to normal, since we're no longer on the worlds. That's better. Now I am actually selling a few too many of these, so I'm gonna stop doing that. A few less of you. I have really not managed my planets well. We have not. Oh, so many of the uh, fledglings just went bye-bye. Hatchlings, fledglings, whatever you want to call them. Fledglings. Yeah, they definitely need escorts. Just some battleships or corvettes or something. Damage good. Health terrible. I've said it like a hundred times now, I'm just repeating myself at this point. So that is it. Both of the Fallen Empires have now fallen to us, and I think we have successfully tested out the dragons. So, uh, let's wrap this up by giving my opinions of them, and then my future plans, because this is definitely not going to be the last time we use this origin. 
So my thoughts on the Origin after this playtest is that, in my honest opinion, it is super fun. I love the idea of it, I love the style of the dragon itself, it's just a really nice Origin, and I think it has the potential of being a very strong Origin as well. I'm not quite sure how strong still, but I think if you built more into it, because I was too slow building the Citadel, I was too slow actually unlocking the dragon in the first place, and a lot of other things, getting that dragon earlier, getting the fledglings earlier, could just win you the game, in my opinion. Especially against, uh, maybe not the full Empire, but like maybe the Great Khan if they awake, um, some of the other mid-game stuff, other Empires obviously, because the, the Dragon helped in this fight over here. But honestly, it would have been a lot more helpful a bit earlier. So I think perhaps still going with the whole Unity Rush, but really trying to get the Psionic stuff would be really good, because unlike a lot of the other Ascension Paths, you don't need more than one tech, you just need to get psy uh, Psionic Theory, then you can get both Mind Over Matter and Transcendence. And you can get that pretty quickly, and since you need that to unlock the next stage of the Dragon Talk, or just getting six of the Ascension perks, that would be pretty good, so you can get the dragon a bit faster, but also a bit more tech heavy than I did this time, so that I could get the citadel up and running a bit earlier, because I was waiting for the citadel to build, before I could even start building the dragon hatchery, which itself has quite a long build time, and then of course, the hatchlings themselves have a very long build time of 1440 days, which is pretty brutal. Another good thing with going after the Sonic Theory is that, if you don't get it, you're still essentially just accidentally going after the biological ones as well. You'll pick those up eventually. Because in this run, what happened was, I got the Engineered Evolution, then I managed to get the Psionic Theory tech, then finally I got the tech for Evolutionary Mastery. So I could have had it earlier, because all, all I needed was that Psionic Theory. So, yeah, I think that's probably how I'd go with it. Really focus on Psionic rather than the engineered stuff. Although we did get to make these lovely precious things. Perfect. Where are you, our lovely squiggles? Yep. You're looking at perfection right there. So with that... Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Off camera, I'm going to be looking at the stats of the dragon, or, well, I guess on camera I'll probably put it somewhere earlier in the video as future Lathrix, because I do want to see the stats of the dragon and exactly how the mechanics work with their weapons and everything else, so that next time I have a bit more knowledge about what's going on. This was really fun to record, but it took surprisingly quite a long time. It was almost a, f a full playthrough in the end, but I am going to stop here, since I do want to try this again properly in the future with a more me-style build. I don't really like Exalted pr uh, Priesthood as a Civic, I just thought it fit the theme and it was as fun, but yeah, there's a lot of things I would have done differently, and next time I'll focus a bit more, and be a bit more meta perhaps. Seeing if the dragon can really stand up against maybe even the endgame crisis. Well, thank you for watching, I'm, I'm waffling way too much now because I'm a bit tired, and goodbye.